My name is Andrea Lurier and I'm the program manager of The Caring Place here in Pittsburgh. The Caring Place is a program for children who have experienced the death of a family member. It's a place where children of all ages can come together and be with other children uh, who know what they're going through because they've been through similar loss experiences. Hi, my name is Therese Forshek and I'm the director of the Highmark Caring Place. And we're walking into the teen room and this is one of the group rooms that kids meet in when they come to the Caring Place. And when they meet in these rooms, they have the opportunity to do a lot of different types of activities that help them talk about the very difficult and intense feelings that they have having had somebody that they love die. And they also have the opportunity to be with other teens their age and other children their age who have had tragedy in their life and therefore they feel much less alone and that there is other people out there that understand. What's unique about the program is that it is for children but it is a family-based program so children come with their whole family and get to be with other children and families and together really find ways of um, feeling less isolated and less lonely in the midst of really difficult loss and grief experiences. At The Caring Place, we have a lot of volunteers who help us with our work, and it was actually one of those volunteers who originally introduced us to Maria Caruso of Bodyography. Bodyography is a company that celebrates health and wellness, and we are a company focused on identifying um, the human condition through movement and particularly we're interested in exploring themes that are medically, scientifically uh, or educationally related and using movement as a platform to raise awareness in the community. For me personally, it's um, movement has always been a part of my own therapy, whether it be running or working out or in the studio. Anything that you do just to kind of clear your head, some people talk, some people go to therapy, some people write, some people paint, it's like an outlet. So using dance um, and having your whole body be able to express what you're trying to say is a quality that I feel is very rare. I had the unique opportunity to go and visit The Caring Place and I met Therese Forshak and Andrea Lurier and many of the staff and as I was walking around and looking at the quilts on the walls telling all the stories of the children and memorializing their lost loved ones I was completely inspired and as I continued to learn about the programming and what they were actually doing at The Caring Place I just felt so compelled to think about the idea of creating a ballet and it just came to me that this would be the most amazing opportunity to work with these children and to tell their stories on the stage. So the beginning of bringing this dance to life was bringing the bodyography dancers to the Caring Place and helping them understand both what we do at the Caring Place but also really begin to understand what grief is like and how it impacts kids so they, they would be a little bit more prepared when they start hearing the stories from the families that they were working with. Yeah, it was a little bit like getting thrown into a fire. It was like, <laughs> welcome, go talk about things with these yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. But um, it, was, it was really surprising to me how, like Kiersey was saying, how quickly you connect with these people that you're, you've never met before. Maria didn't really prep us for any of this, so we kind of came in flying a little bit blind. Um, and then the first night she was like, all right, pick a family. And we were like, okay. So... Um, I gravitated towards Jesse and his mom. Jesse lost his grandmother, um, and a lot of his movements came from the feelings that he had about the loss. It was a, he had a lot of powerful emotions that he couldn't convey with words, so they came out more as movements. She passed away of uh, colon cancer two days after Christmas of 2011, um, and uh, we didn't know that she had it until like. Uh, until like the end of June or whatever because in that month um, we all took her to Cancun, Mexico for her 80th birthday and we kind of surprised her with that whole thing. I just had like a really fun time there and uh, and we didn't know until she had that she had colon cancer until we got back uh, back to Pittsburgh sometime after that and uh, we've been taking care of her a whole lot and then you know two days after Christmas I just found out that she's gone and we were just like extremely close. You know, 
I'm just glad that we had all the, that I have all the memories of her and me. She, she was like a really good buddy to me. told me um, music was a big part of how he copes with things and how he escapes. And one of the things that he said, like he basically gave me the gesture, he said he holds an earphone in one ear and then he plays the piano with the other. So um, that's how one gesture came about. Um, frustration was another one with a, I think we grabbed our head at one point and kind of rocked back and forth. That was, that was a big one. And so from there, he, he kind of just led the whole process. And uh, I think it was a kind of a relief for him to use movement instead of words. It seems like that the greatest gift we can give children who are in pain is our attention, our presence, and our listening. And when I learned more about bodyography, they're kind of taking that listening to another level because what bodyography is saying, the ballet is saying is, we want to hear your story so intently that we will retell what we hear back to you using our whole bodies, using movement. We came to the caring place because my husband of 20 years was killed uh, in a motorcycle accident three months after we, we relocated here from California. So we were only in Pennsylvania for three months. I gave up my job of 18 years, uprooted the kids, moved her out of high school, moved him out of his school, and uh, packed up everything and came out here because he got this really great job out here. And three months after we were here, he was killed. And what was it like for you guys to watch your gestures come to life? It was interesting. I really enjoyed like seeing how they all kind of came together and made this like really cool intricate work of art from just basically a story that we told with our with our mouths and they made it into like a big physical dance. She had terrible tremors, um, anxiety to the point where she couldn't function for a while. I remember this was some anxiety. Then we had Brandon like the feeling like in his yeah, throat. Yeah, he had something in his know. throat and his chest yeah, and every time he went yeah. to talk about it he didn't really know how to speak about it. Diving into somebody's um, life and experience and, and using gesture to explain that is, is so powerful and it's so healing. I, I watched what you did with them and I watched the, the, the kids heal. It was just nice to see them up there together sharing this grief process together because this whole journey for us has been separate. I've had a different grieving process with Kylie as I had with him. He was six when his dad died, she was 15. They grieve completely differently and to see them on stage sharing this together, it just made us feel whole. I think I always knew that the expressive arts are, are transformational, but I had the chance to watch it firsthand how the arts and how ballet was able to transform these children. This whole experience has uh, kind of opened my eyes to the possibilities of movement therapies, doing things with, with troubled teens, with maybe even people who, who can't use their words to deal with emotions. So I'm really um, honored and delighted that this experience has brought to light the fact that this doesn't have to stop with the families that we talk to today. There's so much more that can come out of it and, and it can be so much broader than it actually is. We can't stop bad things from happening in children's lives, but what we can do is give them safe places to come and be people who will be present with them as they try to navigate these unbelievably difficult waters. And so what we do for children and what we strive every day to do better is to simply 
listen.